Welcome back to Loon's Leaves, y'all. Today we're doing an apartment houseplant tour. So a lot of you have been asking for a while now for a houseplant home tour just to see what kind of plants I have. I do feature so many of them on my Instagram, but not enough for you to see my entire collection. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, a couple of things that I want to disclose before we start. I do have a dog, so he might be around in the video. He has a ton of toys and there's hair everywhere. I swear we clean. It's just the inevitability of having a uh, one-year-old German Shepherd uh, around the apartment. Also, um, I might not pronounce all of the names correctly for every single plant. I'm not a botanist or biologist, um, so I will be putting those on the screen for you as we go around the home, and I'll try to have any planters and things linked below as well. I hope you enjoy, and thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. All right, we're gonna start in the kitchen with my first plant, which is a pilea plant that I have above our kitchen cabinets. It was getting quite sunburnt in the windows that we have that are southeast facing. So um, he's up there doing pretty well, benefiting from the artificial light we have. On, if we come down, on the right side of the stove, we have a um, little enclosure with Morimo moss balls. They probably could use a little bit more water. I like to have it like up here. Um, so they're due for a change soon uh, as far as the water goes. And if you're interested in Morimo moss balls and how to care for them, I will be coming out with a separate video about them in the future. So subscribe to the channel to keep updated with that. On the left hand side of the stove, I have a bird's nest fern, one of my favorite types of ferns just because of the way they curl and their leaf structure and shape. Um, inside a cloche from Terrain that I received as a gift. So Terrain can be a little bit expensive. It's kind of a more high-end garden center as well as restaurant and they also have like little gifts and things you can purchase. And so he's getting a quite crammed in here as you can see from this leaf kind of pressing up against the side. So he'll be due for a repot or change out of the cloche soon and I'll have to find a new guy for living in there. But he is putting out a new leaf as you can see it's unfurling right here and so he must be pretty happy and healthy and as you can see the cloche could probably use a good cleaning as well it's got some uh, dust and grime built up from all the spray and everything haven't had to water it in a while though so it's doing pretty well for that purpose on our kitchen island here I have some pieces of my Monstera Deliciosa uh, propagating and I like to give these away as gifts when guests come over and ask about house plants and things like that and I might do a giveaway on the channel coming up soon however I like to wait until they have a good enough uh, root structure and things like that first before giving them away last but not least in the kitchen we have a spider a curly spider plant and he's up there because he was not doing well on the living wall over here on the left hand side. And so he um, got moved up here and is really benefiting from the artificial light, much like the pilea is. So I'm not really sure why they didn't like that direct sunlight, but hey, whatever keeps the plants happy is okay with me. Then we kind of move into our living room. We have an open concept apartment, so there's really no divide between the kitchen and the living room other than this small wall we have. And because it's such an awkward wall and it kind of uh, would be overwhelmed with any art piece, I think, I decided to create a living wall here. And um, I purchased these planters off of Amazon. I have a whole separate video about the living wall. So if you're interested in that, I will link it down below and invite you to go watch that. I don't wanna get into too much detail now about it, but we do have a couple of pothos on the wall, a syngonium, a peperomia, a philodendron Brazil, and I'll have all of those uh, tags there as well for you to see. And then to finish off the wall, we have my gigantic Monstera Deliciosa plant. She has really sprung up so much since I got her. 
I got her for about $14.99 at Wegmans, which is a higher-end grocery store we have here in PA. I think they also are in New Jersey and New York as well, um, but I'm not positive about that. And it had maybe five or six leaves when I got it, and now it's just gigantic. Uh, it might need to be repotted shortly. This pot is not very large that it's in, and I have it on kind of rollers as well, so I can move it around the apartment if I want to. It was in a different corner of our house, but it's now much happier here. It's getting a little bit more of the direct sunlight and has started to kind of climb up the wall a little bit. This isn't anchored to the wall at all. Like it's not stuck on it, but it's kind of using it as a guide, which is kind of fascinating as well as nice because it fills out this area a little bit more as well. So that's the Monstera Deliciosa. We also have our humidifier here, one of two, to keep the wall happy and the Monstera happy. On the other side of our couch, I have a fairly new purchase. I think I got this plant end of December, maybe early October, and it is an Alocasia Royal. There she is. She's just stunning. She did have quite a few damages on her when I first purchased her. She's also a little bit dusty like these. This was one of the original leaves. You can see it's kind of browning. This has some speckling on it and a couple of other things. But overall, it's doing okay. Much better now that it's in my care. And it's put out this new leaf, which is just stunning. And there's no brown bits or things like that. So that's why I think it's not like a pest issue or anything. Um, I think it was just the care of that that it had in the store. And it is also putting out another new leaf right here. So with alocasias, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this to be true, only new leaves can form from the leaf that just formed. So because this was the newest leaf, any new leaves can only stem from this guy here. So the next new leaf will come from the stalk or the stem of this guy, um, which is kind of fascinating. So make sure if you purchase an alocasia from a big box store, that you do not cut off any of the foliage if you are unsure which of the leaves might have been the first to grow or the last to grow. And you can kind of see at this angle, this leaf is one of the original ones and it's curling in a little bit. So I don't know if that's just residual damage from before or if that's because of my care. So I have to do a little bit more research about that, but you can see how massive the leaves are. Also, you might have also noticed, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. You might have also noticed that there are beautiful rainbows on the walls and they kind of trail around the apartment as the day goes on and as the sun changes. Those are from the Helmova sun catchers that I purchased and I'll point those out when we see them in the window. And I'll try to have them linked below. She's a small business owner and does a beautiful job with all things uh, plant gift related. Also, right before we leave this guy, something else you might have noticed is that there's a bit of kitchen, uh, kitchen, chicken wire on the uh, plant right here, as well as some rocks. This is a um, system I'm trying out to keep my dog out of digging in our plants. That's why it's also propped up on another planter here as well to keep it a, a little bit higher than his height. And so it has been working really, really well so far. Again, another video will be coming out shortly about pests or pets and plants and how to keep your pets out of your plants. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to Loon's Leaves and I will keep you updated as far as that goes. If we go on the other side of my partner's desk here, we'll start in this window. We have some Ikea planters with some more of the curly spider plants. And then below that, directly, we have a gorgeous jade plant that I received from a friend. It's just doing really well. It's put out a, quite a bit of new growth since I've had it. Then we have a cactus that I just recently purchased. And hopefully, you just recently saw a video I uploaded about cactus tips and tricks. And this guy is the star of the show of that video. Um, so if you wanna know his story, definitely watch that. I will also link it down below. Next to him, I have my Christmas cactus. 
It is early January as I'm filming this, and so the blooms have kind of just left, um, which is really sad, but I will try to import a picture here so you guys can see what it looked like when it was in full bloom around the Christmas holiday season, and it was just stunningly gorgeous. Next to that guy, we have some cacti. I'm not exactly sure if this is a cacti or a succulent, and I'm not exactly sure how to ID him. I'm gonna move him into the light a little bit. So, not exactly sure what this guy is. Let me know in the comments if you do know. This little cactus, love the um, spines and the shape of this one. And then we have my favorite cactus right now, which is kind of this guy. He's put out so much new growth, these little nubs. And he almost looks fuzzy, but obviously would not be a great idea to touch him. Right above them are my string of pearls that have just grown so much since I purchased them. I got these guys at Terrain as well, and they were maybe this long, like two, three inches tops, if that. Um, and then they've grown in the two to three years that I've had them, I can't remember exactly how long, all the way down to here. So I will put the exact length um, on the screen for you now after I measure them. And then you might have noticed the Helmeva, um, I think I'm saying Hemleva. It's a Swedish or Swiss word, I believe. I will link her um, store down below as well if you're interested in the sun catcher. On the other side of the string of pearls, we have an additional curly spider plant inside an Ikea planter. I have a whole video about Ikea planters that I will also link down below. I feel like this video is just a promotion of my channel. And then a Peperomia, which has been doing fabulously since it's been in my care, um, not to boast or anything, but it has really just popped out so much new growth since purchasing it. And then directly next to that, in between that guy and the cactus, we have a variegated Peperomia and I just think this plant is stunning. I like love Peperomia overall, and so seeing a variegated one, which is something I'm really attracted to in plants, I just had to immediately purchase this guy. And they weren't too expensive. These came from big box stores, and I don't think were more than $12, I wanna say. Maybe, definitely under 15, no more than um, 20 bucks at the most. But yeah, beautiful variegation on there. If we dip down below, on the windowsill. See, we have these nice windows that go almost to the floor. We have a Dracinia or Dracaena. I've heard it pronounced both ways and probably a variety of other ways as well. So I'm not exactly sure how to say it. I will put the name of this exact type on the screen. I think it has something to do with uh, the coloring on the leaves here being more pinkish uh, magenta color. And then I have a terrarium from Target years ago. Uh, one of my roommates purchased it for me as a gift and it has some English ivy growing inside of it. Again, it's kind of busting at the seams here, so it might be time for a little bit of a repot on that guy. This is a gift I got from my partner. It's a coral cactus. I'm gonna try to move it into the sunlight a little bit so you can see it. It's a variegated coral cactus, very subtle, but you can see there's some darker areas. Sorry, I wish the camera would focus. There's some darker areas and some lighter areas. It did have these little like flower-like texture up here. I don't know a whole lot about coral cactus and the way they grow. It looks pretty similar to when we first purchased it or when my partner first purchased it. And if you were following me on Instagram at the time, you'll know that these rocks are glued in. So I'm not sure if I should do a recon mission on this guy and get him out of there or just kind of let him stay and be happy. He seems fine for now, but again, don't know a whole lot about coral cactus. So let me know down in the comments if you have any tips or tricks for those guys. This side of the windowsill we keep pretty bare because our dog likes to put his paws up there and kind of look around and see what's going on outside. All right, moving on. So di directly next to the window, I have an Ikea plant stand here. And on the Ikea plant stand, I have the Ikea mini greenhouse set up. And you can see my sweatpants in the glass. 
Um, inside the mini greenhouse, I have an Alocasia Fry deck that has seen better days. Um, he's doing okay. He has a new little leaf back there. If you can see it, I'll put a little arrow. Um, and so he's doing all right. We're still kind of testing him out in here and uh, hopefully he gets better. He did have a bout of spider mites, was in quarantine for a bit, and now is back inside the uh, planter or the uh, greenhouse. We have a begonia right here. Again, sorry for the glare. A lovely begonia. I have another peperomia. Oh, that's not going to want to focus up there. Another peperomia over here in the center. And then an alocasia um, black velvet or black velvet alocasia that's been doing really, really well inside the IKEA mini greenhouse. Directly next to that, we have a kokidama. Um, this is one of the kokidama from the kokidama video I made on how to make them and care for them. Um, so again, if you're interested, please look at that video. And this is a grow bulb in this lamp here just because it doesn't get a whole lot of sunlight from this window directly next to it and from the um, patio door right here. On the other side of the patio door, we have my ponytail palm. And this guy has the same kind of system set up to keep the dog out of there. And I've had the ponytail palm now for I want to say two to three months and it's been doing really, really well inside that pot. Next to that, on this nice three-tiered lamp, we have some cacti. There's a big long one down there. He's doing nicely. He's grown a lot since I've gotten him. This is not water spillage right here, by the way, um, surrounding the pot. This is called earthquake hold gel or museum gel. It does kind of leak out a little bit because this area does get some sun, so as it melts, it kind of um, creates a ring around things, but it does come off and it doesn't stain or anything like that. I have it in a couple other places in our house. In case the dog bumps into the lamp, then none of these guys go flying. You can give it a good shake and they're um, pretty set there. And then finally, other than that cactus right there, we have um, a little bit of a succulent here. I'm not exactly sure what kind. If you do know, and I can't figure it out, but I put it in the video. Um, you can leave me a comment down below. Tell me what kind it is. But yeah, so succulent and then the two cactuses down here. On the other side of our TV console, we have my beautiful Boston fern that I received um, as a gift from a coworker because her mother could not care for it anymore. So she uh, kind of asked me to care for them um, while her mother uh, was sick and then her mother just decided that they did so well in my care she just gave them to me so that was really nice I used to have two and one of them was at school and unfortunately died because when I was teaching didn't realize we would be in quarantine for as long as we were inside the bedroom here we have a lovely snake plant inside a um, little basket I'll put the exact type of snake plant up on the screen Right above that, we have the last planter out of the set of seven from Amazon from the living wall. Uh, I just thought seven would look weird on the living wall. You can hear more about it in that video. And this has some more jade in there. It's a little bit small for this pot, but we just wanted to fill it. Then we have, I'm sorry if you hear my dog. He's having like a little moment, a little zoomy. He loves the carpet. He doesn't get a lot of time in here. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I have two containers that are going to have future plants in there. One of them, the one right here, I'm hoping to put a moss garden inside, kind of like an open terrarium top. I might find a lid for it eventually, but I uh, kind of wanted like a little open um, ecosystem going on. And then in this cloche, this is a very inexpensive cloche from Ikea, um, I am getting an asparagus fern in the mail shortly from Etsy, from an Etsy seller, and I want to make a very small kokidama with it. It's about two inches, as so the Etsy listing said. So hopefully he comes and is fine and can have a little kokidama home um, inside this cloche. In this little pentagram terrarium, I received this guy from my grandma. Um, when she moved, she didn't want it anymore. I have some succulents propagating in there, and I'll show you the mother succulent they came from in just a second. 
Then I have a beautiful bird of paradise. I sorry the for all of the uh, rainbow things over here. That's from um, this is my teaching background when I teach on Zoom, so that's why those are there. Um, but this bird of paradise is just stunning. It only had about four leaves when I first got it from my sister as a birthday present, and has since put out three new leaves. So this one here, this guy, and this guy is literally maybe two weeks old. He just popped out there and is doing beautifully. You can see all my teaching stuff on the bed behind us. But yeah, so super well. The reason I don't have the um, chicken wire on this plant here is because the dog is typically, typically not allowed in the bedroom because A, I'm teaching and B, carpet and other plants are pretty tempting to him. On this windowsill in our bedroom, I have a Syngonium. This Syngonium is around 40 to 50 years old. We can't exactly uh, determine how old it is, but it is from um, my grandmother. It's from her original Syngonium plant. So I'm sure all of the original leaves have since shed um, off or fallen off, but it did come from a mother plant that is around 40 to 50 years old. So I think that's pretty cool. On the lower shelf here, I have some more Monstera propagations going. Sorry, the lighting gets a little wonky in the bedroom. And then I also have a little planter um, based off of a character from Animal Crossing. If you play Animal Crossing, you might know about Lloyd. He's like a little construction worker. Um, and so I just have yet to put a plant in there. This character over here on this little, um, uh, what do you call this? A bag i don't know why i couldn't remember that um is leaf from animal crossing and he came with this little planter here that i got from my sister for christmas it has a bunch of animal crossing imagery all around it there's tom nook little island stitches I'm not sure who this character is i don't have her but yeah lots of the cute little characters apparently this came with some succulent seeds um so she tells me i did plant them up about a week and a half ago and I don't see anything but I have no idea how long succulent seeds take. I've never seen a succulent grow from seed or I don't even know how you would get seeds from a succulent but it's a little experiment we have going on and if it doesn't work out I'll put something else in that cute little planter because hate for that to go to waste. On the other side of him we have our other um, humidifier that needs more water. We have the mother succulent to the ones in the little pentagram planter or terrarium. And I have no idea what this kind of succulent is. I've asked a couple of times on Instagram. No one seems to know. He has this interesting like foliage to him and has even started to pop out a second like main plant here. This guy has grown from the stem of the original one. Um, has also like a fuzzy center to it. I don't know how well you can see that to keep focusing. I film on an iPhone, so not the best quality. But yeah, if you know, let me know. And I have some propagations going for it, so maybe we'll give those away shortly. And then another cacti. There's a pup from the Pilea. As you can see, it's not doing so hot. Some of the leaves are getting burned. I have no idea. I guess it's too much light over here. Um, so he might get moved above the kitchen cabinets as well. And then part of a Pothos um, propagation, another type of snake plant, another Hemleva uh, suncatcher, and then we have some string of pearls propagating. So lots of propagations going on in the bedroom. Not a lot of guests see this space, so this is kind of where I keep all my experiments. A piece of the bigger snake plant over in the corner, the first one we saw when walking in here. Um, I've had this guy propagating for around two to three months and nothing has happened yet. So hopefully I'm doing it right. If you do know anything about these guys, let me know. I did hear that you can dip them in some sell-on cinnamon and it kind of acts as a rooting hormone. So we'll see how that goes. And then last but not least, we have a ginseng, ginseng or ginseng, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, um, bonsai plant. So. 
This is kind of another like poor man's bonsai. They're pretty inexpensive and I have let mine kind of grow all over. I'm not really doing a great job of bonsaiing him. He was supposed to be a gift for somebody who does enjoy bonsai and then I never got it to them because of quarantine. So he's living here now, kind of happy and healthy over here in the bedroom corner. And to address the elephant in the room, or I should say out of the room, yes, that is our live Christmas tree on our patio. Our um, apartment complex usually has a dumpster for live trees that go to a local farm, and they didn't have one uh, this year for some odd reason, and so we don't know what to do with it. Um, I will definitely be researching who we can donate it to so their little animals can eat it, and uh, horses and donkeys and things like that. I apparently love uh, pine trees, or maybe a local zoo. That would be fun. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I am really appreciative of all of the love I've gotten on Instagram and things like that in the comments section and DMs. So, again, thank you for watching this plant tour. I will be inserting right now some footage of the last two plants that I have in my house which are a container of air plants as well as um, one more of the kokidama. Those two are in my bathroom and the reason I just didn't want to go in there is because A, it's not the cleanest and B, I have to climb up onto our toilet to get to some of them because they're hanging and so I figured that wouldn't be as aesthetically pleasing for this uh, video. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you next Sunday.